Sun's coming out. <clears throat> Sun is coming out. Um. The hard part is over. Now the easy part, my eight hour full time job. The hard part's over. So, congratulations on another night survived. And <coughs> good next time. Having a job, it's fucking bullshit. Maybe not having a job, but this job is fucking bullshit. Sometimes it's chill, sometimes. <coughs> well, it's not really. <coughs> they had us moving like a bunch of paint. Like fucking huge, like buckets of paint. <laughs> must have been at least like, God, it must have been at least two fucking hundred of those things. We were doing that last time too. We get to the end of it. All right, last time and, and today, first thing in the morning, just like hella exercise. So yeah, I motherfucking slept in one of these closets right here, one with a door, okay, for like two hours. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I can't give a fuck. <clears throat> it might have been. It might have been three hours. I don't, I don't care. Okay. Uh, finally wake up, start shuffling around, looking for things to do. This guy, he's like, this guy, he's like, uh, yeah, I've been tasked with making sure you don't sneak off, bro. I am on the brink of resignation. I'm going to fucking quit this job if you don't shut the fuck up and get away from me. Well, it's whatever. We laugh it off. I tried to ask him who, to who tasked him with that. And he's just like, my boss, whatever. You know, this other guy, okay, this, I don't know if you'll understand what I'm saying, but at least for my own memory's sake, this will make sense to me. So it's like two sides of the neighborhood that we're building. On one side, we've got a thousand fucking things of paint. And on the other side, we've got the place there the, the paint needs to go to. The guy, you know, is supposed to come over with the forklift, pick it up, take it over there, bring a pallet back. And I'm supposed to stage the pallet with five or six more things of paint. Easy. So that's how the day starts. Uh, and then they're like, yeah, we need somebody else over there on the other end. So I'm like, yep, cool. This fucking guy, you know, and he's cool. <coughs> but like I walk in, first of all, there's like 200 things of paint stacked up inside this fucking building. I don't know where the fuck it's supposed to go. I haven't been on the side of the building. Fucking walk past it to look inside. Man, I don't remember what this guy said. He was like, he was like, don't just fucking walk past it, blah, blah, blah. Basically, like, kind of getting, you know, worked up. And, you know, to give you some background, this guy smokes a cigarette every 20 minutes. I'm not exaggerating at fucking all. So, <clears throat> based off of that, I can kind of assume that he's a pretty tense guy, you know. He probably needs a cigarette whenever <laughs> he starts coming at people crazy or whatever. But, you know, the point is, his tone was just all wrong, right? I don't argue, but I was like, oh, uh, oh, this is what he said. He was like, I know you don't want to be here, um, but blah, 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 blah. First of all, like, I have never confided in you that I don't want to fucking be here, okay? Yes, it's true. I don't want to fucking be here. Nobody wants to fucking be here. Who wants to, who wants to fucking be here? Who wants to fucking be here, okay? Nobody wants to fucking be here. I have not told you that. I haven't said that. I haven't... I didn't make that clear at any point. <coughs> you know, so I'm doing my fucking thing. Bro, I'm working hard. I was already working hard before I got there. All that paint that he was talking about, me not helping him move, one of which he knocked over. Thankfully, he didn't spill. 
But all that fucking paint that he was loaded into the building, I literally, just on the other side of the neighborhood, literally just staged that exact same paint. So it's like, bro, like, I don't know, give me a fucking break. I'm taking a break. You take a break every fucking 10, 15 minutes, I swear to God. I think that's the guy that tasked, what's his name? Whatever his name is, with making sure I'm working. <laughs> with, with making sure I don't sneak away. Let me tell you another thing. If I'm... If I'm trying to sneak away, you're not going to fucking find me, dude. Okay, the reason that you found me is because I finished my little nap and I walked outside the building so that I could find something to do. Okay. <clears throat> I don't fucking find me if I'm sneaking away. Be out of here. I have 12 days until I have to go to court. I'm thinking about doing a full week of work next week, I, th I think. I think I would appreciate it in the future, the week afterward, if I did that week of work. I could do two weeks of work and just miss a couple days uh, around the court date. But, you know, I'm just like, fuck. I, if I, 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 I feel like I've said this so many times, but if I did not have court, I wouldn't even be anywhere near Colorado. Be fucking gone. <clears throat> my mother checked in with me for about three days and let me just preface this by saying you know sometimes I, I look at myself I look at my, how I act when my parents can't help me or choose not to help me or whatever and I don't know sometimes I think to myself oh my god I sound like such a spoiled brat I sound like uh you know, needy and this and that. <clears throat> I was really upset when my mom told me she didn't have enough money to help me get my car out the impound. After a few sobering days of you know, real homelessness, I'm, I'm realizing uh, a couple of things. One, uh, there just was no hope for that car. Can't fix that car. Even if, I, I would need 1,500 fucking dollars to actually get something meaningful done with that car to fix it and to get it out of the impound. Maybe, maybe 800, I don't know. <clears throat> but that would be, that would be an enormous waste of money. It really would. Um, I think what bothered me more, yeah, definitely what bothered me more was the idea that, um, you know, my mother knows that I lived in my car <clears throat> <clears throat> and now you know it's gone and she didn't like check in with me at all to see where I was sleeping how I'm living this or that so that bothered me a lot in her defense uh <clears throat> I'm a pretty awful texter, especially when I'm emotional. I have to take the time to talk to myself for 30 minutes or so <laughs> between every message about how I feel and think about it. So the point of that was to say, um, you know, it's not my mother's fault. It's nobody's fault. It's nobody's fault. It's hardly even mine. It's just things happen. <laughs> I, I bit the homeless bullet a long time ago. I bit it a long time ago, but now I've been chewing and <laughs> I think I'm going to end up with a fucking cold. This is one of those moments where I really try to remember I me before I left Virginia, I just couldn't stop saying to myself, like, first, well, first I would start listing off all the reasons why my life is fucking over and this and that, because I moved out to Virginia. Um, but then, uh, uh, then I would follow that up with reminding myself that leaving that place wasn't about being upset, wasn't about being mistreated, hating this or feeling hated or this or that. Even though those might have been, you know, I, even though the... The, the feelings of judgment and this and that were huge factors in me deciding to leave 
and staying gone for so long. Um, the truth is that I just want more from life. I really do. I, j I just want more from life. Uh, I don't want to be in the same... No, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not even going to say what I don't want. I want to go to places and, and see people and meet people and make friends and do crazy things and... Oh. Somebody's coming into here, I believe. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> you know, I want to do interesting things in my life, jobs, maybe. I was talking to somebody, he was like, yeah, at least you're off this weekend, I got, uh, uh, I'm doing, you know, baseboard, caulking, or whatever the fuck he said he was going to do. And I was like, oh, you're independent contractor, huh? He's like, yeah. Um, I was just like, why don't you just do that full time? Like, DoorDash was a whole ass business for me. And I, and no matter what anybody says, I love that shit. And I do it. I did it religiously. Um, I do plan on not doing it eventually. But I always think to myself, ever since I started doing that shit for a living, I always think to myself, like, I I don't want a job. I want to run my own fucking thing. And I don't think that that's a bad thing at all. I don't think that's even kind of a bad fucking thing, dude. Okay? Because you know what? I don't give a shit about cutting the fucking plastic off of this goddamn water heater after they already went and tied it all down around the fucking plastic. I don't give a fuck about this. Two people today said to me um, something along the lines of, if you don't want to be here, or or I can tell you don't want to be here, or some, some, you know, something to that effect. The two people today have told me that, have, have, have put the words in my mouth, I don't want to fucking be here. Yeah, you fucking got me. I don't want to fucking be here. Why would I want to be here? What are we doing? Cutting fucking plastic off of water heaters. I don't want a fucking job. Because this is a job. This is this is job stuff, man. This is this is what it is when you make money for other people. They give you busy work. Okay. They give you fucking they give you fucking bullshit. They fucking tell you you're not doing enough, you're doing too so much, you know this and that. It's been a long time since I've had co-workers, since I've had schedules, all that stuff. Anyway. So I was telling the guy, I was like, yeah, why don't you just do that full time? He was like, oh, well, maybe I would, but my truck is in the shop, which is a valid reason. And I was like, yeah, you know, I loved uh, being an independent contractor with DoorDash, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, but, but I've always, I, I just want to have my own business. He's like, oh, what kind of business? I told him I don't know. The truth is, this right here is, <laughs> I don't know if they're just going to pay. I do believe, let me say something, let me say something, I do believe, with the catalog of videos that I have in my phone, as well as the catalog of notes that I have for actual scripted ideas, within 10 years, I absolutely could monetize my channel. It's, it's not even like a, I, I don't even really think that that's like um, an unrealistic thing at all. Okay. Even if I couldn't monetize through ad revenue, like I think that I would be able to connect with enough strangers in a way that brings me money. I think I'm pretty capable of that. I think I'm well spoken. Some would say articulate. Please don't say articulate. I think I am <laughs> plenty entertaining. Maybe even inspiring a bit. Okay. I'm a professional storyteller, and I'm only going to get better at it, so 
this is kind of the business, but I don't really like to talk to people about that. I don't tell anybody about my internet shenanigans, which is, um, sometimes I'm, I really get confused with myself about whether or not that is the right way to do it. Because uh, if your goal is to make money being a niche micro internet celebrity, you kind of need a lot of people to know you. So maybe it would help to recruit, recruit, but you know, bring those people in from the real world. But at the same time, it's like, we're talking about the internet. We're not talking about, you know, technically the internet is in the real world, but you know what the fuck I'm saying. So it's like, I don't know. I, I just don't want to talk about it. It's embarrassing. I, I guess I keep a lot of secrets, right? Nobody out here except for one person knows I'm homeless. There'd be a lot of cats out of the bag if I, you know, started telling people to look up Donate Hills Up. I just don't really want that right now. Especially not in this place. Anyway, all that was just, I don't know why I said all that. Because the reason that I walked into this other room <coughs> was to say, uh, yeah, my mother texted me back today. She said, hey, I got paid. She said a couple of things. She said, hey, I got paid today. Do you still need help getting your car out of the impound one? Um, and she said, uh, weird question. She said, weird question. Uh, what? Why do you need to get your car out the impound or whatever if you just fixed it? And like that kind of goes back to what I was saying, right? Like you're not like, like you're worried about me and I love that and I respect and I and I and I fuck with that, cool. But like you're not actually checking in with me and you're not actually like informed on what my life is going through. <clears throat> a whole month ago, it was literally, literally, it was like the 14th. I swear to God, a whole fucking month ago. Um. I asked not just my mother, but everybody in my family if they could help me buy a starter for my car. One, nobody fucking cared at all. Practically no one fucking even began to respond. Shout out to my little sister. Shout out to my older sister. They did send me some money. My older sister has sent me some money the day before. My younger sister sent me a considerable amount of money, a considerable amount of money. I think she sent me like a hundred bucks that day. <clears throat> and I was cool. Um, you know, <sighs> let me say this. I keep getting distracted, keep going on thought trains, but gotta get it all out. Right. When, <clears throat> 